So I suppose the million dollar question is, if my portable aircon unit blew up tomorrow, would I run out and replace it? I've been testing the use of a portable air conditioner to heat the main living area of my house for about a month now. In my previous video I covered the why and how this works, so I'm not going to go into too much detail on that again. But basically, I'm looking to use the excess solar generated by my rooftop panels to power the portable air conditioning unit, which is basically an air-to-air -air heat pump, so capable of heating or cooling depending on which way we want to shift the warm air. Now the basic economics of this is pretty straightforward. If my solar panels can generate enough output on sunny winter's days to cover the base load of my house, e.g. fridge, freezer, devices on standby, oven clocks, etc., as well as running the portable air con, I can effectively heat my house for free. Now, that requires somewhere between one and one and a half kilowatts of energy per hour, uh, which from testing is achievable on sunny days. It's more like 500 watts of generation on sort of mixed winter's days with a bit of sun, bit of cloud, which does help, but doesn't totally cover at all. Now, the output of the aircon heater is supposedly around three kilowatts for around one kilowatt of electricity input versus an electric fan heater, which typically gives out about two kilowatts of heat for two kilowatts of electricity in. So 50% more output from the aircon for 50% less cost to run, or even, as I say, free to use, as I said, if the solar generation covers it. So it all sounds pretty good on paper. However, there are a few things that are not so good about using a portable air conditioner as a heater, and those are the things I'm going to cover today. Now, the first thing I'm not so keen on is, is the noise. Now, it's, it's not so loud as to be problematic in um, that you can function in the same room as the air conditioner, but it's certainly present, and it's certainly louder than the equivalent fan heater or other small heating device. Um, now I've got it running at the moment um, so you might hear a bit of a background hum. Um, you, you know how would I quantify it without without having a decibel meter? It's probably sort of somewhere between a um, fan heater running and a, a hairdryer on quietish mode. So as I say not too intrusive for getting on with day-to-day -day life but certainly not something you'd want running all evening in the same room if you wanted peace and quiet. The second thing is, is sheer size. Quite simply, these are pretty big and bulky devices. In our case, uh, this electric IQ model uh, is about 38 centimetres deep, pretty much square cross section there, and 77 centimetres tall. I've put a, a, my bike helmet on there for, for reference. So you can see it's, it's a pretty big and bulky device. In this case, I've got it sitting in the conservatory and pumping the air in through the French doors that way. Number three is venting. Now, if you're using a plumbed in air conditioning system, this is all uh, managed. And when you're using a portable one, you need to have some way of venting the cool air from the air conditioner or hot air if you're using it as an air conditioner out of the building. In this case we have this six inch or so diameter vent pipe and I have this running out through a hole in the, the wooden door of the conservatory but obviously you need a solution to make that work. Now in most cases for that venting problem um, a window vent supply kit is included with the air conditioner so effectively you run the vent pipe out through a an open window and you use a, a small tent-like structure to ensure that cold air doesn't blow back in through any, any gap. Number four goes a little bit hand in hand with the venting and that is the water drainage. Now, in this case, these air conditioner, portable air conditioner units generate in heating mode quite a lot of water, which is effectively moisture removed from the air. Now that itself is, is somewhat a good thing, it removes moisture from the air, it's effectively acting as a dehumidifier. However, the flip side to that is that you've got to have a means of uh, either emptying or removing this water quickly from the house. Now in my case, I've plumbed on a, a large or a lengthy bit of plastic pipe and I run that outside periodically and drain the water that way. In all honesty, putting a little, a little pump on with a flip switch to drive that water out of the house would be would be a best way of doing it because I do find that every hour or so of running the air conditioner 
I need to make sure I'm emptying that pipe. So just letting it drain naturally or having a little pump on it to pump it out would be a superior way to manage that water. Now the final downside and the reason why these systems may not suit everyone is probably the breeze the unit produces. So obviously they push quite a high volume of air, um, heated or cooled air out into the room. The breeze obviously always makes it feel cooler, whether we're on a hot summer's day by the sea um, or on a, a windy mountain, that, that wind or breeze always makes it feel cooler because it transfers more heat energy from your skin more quickly. Um, now it's a very noticeable breeze with a, with a portable aircon unit so as a device it's probably better suited to heating the space when you're not sat in it if the breeze bothers you. Now part of the reason I've run this test with a portable aircon system is really to assess the, the heating capability and to decide, help me decide whether this is a, a good way to think about my next central heating system maybe looking at something like a mini split system which effectively uses an outside air conditioning unit that um, pumps the coolant to or to a number of internal wall mounted units. Now that obviously mitigates a lot of the problems we see or the problems I've highlighted with the portable unit. You remove the bulk issue, you remove the need to worry about venting and drainage um, and even though those are a lot more expensive than portable units so you can typically look at a two to three thousand pounds for a sort of multi multi-unit mini split system um, that is considerably cheaper than an air to water heat pump to power a conventional radiator system. Uh, as I showed with the first test it's it's quite capable of pumping out heat, uh, sufficient heat to make a, a good change to the living space and take it from a, in this, you know, today it's in, in 45 minutes or so pumped the temperature up by a couple of degrees in the living room, so from a 16 to an 18 degrees. Um, does this mean that I'm sort of seriously thinking about using an air-to-air -air heat pump or an air conditioner type system for heating for my next central heating install? Absolutely. I'm confident it can provide the heating output. It's definitely much more energy efficient than using, well, you know, the simple math shows it's much more energy efficient than using fan heaters or other electric forms of heating. Heat pumps just work better. Um, and also the, the, the benefits of a properly plumbed in air con system remove a lot of the, the downsides of the portable unit, so the unit bulk, etc. So I suppose the million dollar question is, if my portable aircon unit blew up tomorrow, would I run out and replace it? The answer is probably no. Um, I think aircon or air-to-air -air heat pumps as a heating system works pretty well. I'm pretty satisfied with that. What I don't like really is mainly the form factor, the, the bulk, the space, the noise, um, I think I'd, I'd definitely go with uh, look into replacing with an air to air heat system, but I would use a, a mini split or some such system. Um, there's also some really quite interesting looking wall mounted units, so they look like a slightly fat radiator and they have two little outlets in the wall, and that I think would also be a better solution. Um, in terms of getting the, the benefits of air to air heat pump heating into your house but without having to deal with the downsides of a portable, portable unit.